All right, so today I'm back with another canning video. Now Clay just got back from a hunting trip in Texas and he brought back a wild pig. And so today I'm gonna show you my favorite way to can pork. Now when I can venison, you know, I just do it in a raw method. I just chop the raw meat up, put it in the jars and stick it in the canner. But I don't like to do that with my pork for a couple reasons. One, pork is greasy, a little bit greasier than deer. And so if you just chop this up and then you put it into the jar, you are gonna have more grease in that jar. And then you're just not gonna get as much of the flavor as the way I did it. So when I can pork, I love, my absolute favorite way to do it is to put the pork on the smoker and smoke it and get that nice smoky flavor. And then once it gets that nice smoky flavor, I take it out and then I put it into the oven in a big cast iron, right here, this big cast iron Dutch oven and with just a tiny bit of juice in the bottom. And, then, and so then I let that cook in there for eight to 10 hours until it just falls off the bone. And then I shred it and then I do my canning. It's not dry or anything because you are gonna be putting the juice, some of the juice that you cooked this pig in, in the jars with it. So let's get started and I'm gonna show you how to do this. A couple things about canning meat. Canning meat is 100% safe to do when you are using a pressure canner. To can meat safely, you have to use a pressure canner. There's just no way to kill the bacteria in a water bath method. And so if you're gonna can meat, you need to have the pressure canner. And you also don't have to start with your, this meat's cold, so you can start with cold meat, cold juice, and then of course I have my jars over here. Now my jars are washed, but you don't have to sterilize your jars. So you're gonna be putting this into the pressure canner and it's gonna stay in there for my pint jars here. It's gonna be in there for 75 minutes, so it's gonna kill any kind of bacteria that's in the jar. So with your jars, you just wanna make sure you go and give them a once over look, make sure there's no cracks, you know, or chips in the glass, because any little thing like that can mess up a jar of it, and then it makes a huge mess in the canner if one of your jars bust. Now to can pork like this does require a bit of work, and I did have Clay, you know, start the smoker up and put all this meat on the grill, and he smoked this for me and brought it in. He was so nicely even shredded all this since I was so busy, um, but we have a big tray of shredded pork here. It tastes excellent. We did season this up some when we put this on the grill, so it does have spices on it. You can put any type of a spice you want on it. Just keep in mind that when you are canning, um, if you use something that was really salty and the meat is already really salty, you're not gonna wanna add any more salt to your jar. Now I know that our seasoning mix here that we did did not have a lot of salt in it, so I'm gonna be adding a half of a teaspoon of salt to every pint jar. And then also if you wanted to go ahead and put any other spices in with your jars or peppers or anything like that, you can do that totally fine. It's not gonna mess anything up. It's not gonna add any other time to your, um, to your batch. One thing I will say about pressure canners, you know, make sure you know how to use your pressure canner, read your book, the time on different pressure canners are a little bit different. So today I'm gonna to be keeping my gauge at 11 pounds of pressure. Some of them don't have that option. Some of them come in um, five, 10, and 15 um, weighted rings, and that's what you would use. So make sure you check your canner, canner book, make sure you read that and what they, you know, what they're requiring and what the time that your book says for meat. And also if you're at different elevations, you need to check on that as well because you are at higher elevations, you're gonna add more time, you know, not, not very much, just a few minutes, but you're gonna have to add more time to that. So make sure you check that. But pretty much all the hard work is done on this. We've smoked it, we've pulled it up, we've smoked it, we put it in the oven and cooked it, you know, till it fell off the bone, we've shredded it. So really all we're gonna do now is just put this into the jars, put some juice on it and then put it into our pressure canner. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a half a teaspoon of salt to each one of my jars here. And we're just gonna go ahead and put our pork in the jars. Now you don't have to shred this. You could leave this in big chunks if you would like. Um, I just prefer to have mine shredded and so that's the way we did it. So I am gonna pack this in here but I'm not packing it tightly. Um, I had a lot of comments on my venison video when I said I packed it in there. I am packing it in there because it's gonna cook down, but I'm not packing it so tightly in there that there's no space. There is still space you know, for the juice and everything to get all around in there. And you wanna leave about an inch headspace at the top to make sure you have a proper seal on this. Now I am putting the skin and everything in here. I'm not picking out. If I see chunks of fat, that goes in here as well. Okay. 
And so you can see this is some of the, ju the juice. It's just gelatinous. All this is going to go into the jars as well. I'm just picking up the chunks of meat out of here with all that on there and just putting them in the jars. And then I have some juice from where I cooked this in the oven that I'm going to go ahead and put in here on top of this. If you didn't have any juice for this, you I mean you could put water in there if you wanted. That would probably be my last thing I would do, but you could use just water. A um, better option is to use some um, bone broth. Um, if you didn't have any at home, you could just buy some at the store or even um, you know beef broth, chicken broth, anything like that, just to give it some juice and flavor in there. I do put fat in my jars. I know that USDA says that you should not put any kind of fat in your jar because it's going to make your, jar, your meat go rancid. I have never once had a jar of meat go rancid from putting fat in it and so that's what I do. But if you wanted to follow what the USDA says, they say not to put any kind of fat into your meat. Use the leanest meat possible. And I'm going to just wipe the top of these jars off here. Always wipe your jars off to make sure you get a really good seal. When you're pressure canning, you also don't want really tight lids on your jars. You want to do what's called fingertip tight. We are just using your fingers and you're just giving it a good snug like that. You're not wrenching down on the lids. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just stick these aside and work on the next jars. And so when you're putting your juice in your jar, make sure that it's getting into all those little bubbles in there. You don't want any big air bubbles. So if you have to, you can take a knife and go around the edge to make sure that juice goes all the way to the bottom. And you can see right there is a big air bubble where there's no juice at. Now you don't want that. So that's when you want to use your knife and go around. If you just stick your knife right down in there, all the juice fills in that hole. And then just work your way all the way around the jar. All right, so we are ready to go ahead and put these in the canner. My canner, I can double stack in it. Some canners you can't, some are just small enough for one layer. But this one here, I can double stack. So we're just gonna go ahead and start putting, the, putting these in here and see how many we can fit. All right, so I was able to fit 16 jars into this canner right here. Now I have water on the bottom. There will be marks inside your canner and your book will tell you which one of those marks to fill it up to. I know mine here, I, fill, I filled it up to the very bottom mark with water. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on here now. I'm gonna go ahead and put the lid on it, but before you put the lid on it, check to make sure your seal is in here good, all your stuff is nice and tight, and then you have the little the little vent right here, you always want to look through that and just give it a little bit of a blow just to make sure there's nothing stuck in there. So that's cleaned out. So we're going to go ahead and pop this lid on here. We're waiting for steam to start coming out of this spout here. Once steam starts coming out of there, you're going to let that steam for 10 minutes just to get all of the air and stuff out of the canner. Then I'm going to put my weight on here and then once I put that weight on there, it'll start building up pressure. Your 75 minutes, which is what I'm using today for pints, doesn't start until I get to 11 pounds of pressure. So this is probably going to take a good 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes to get up to 11 pounds of pressure. That is where my 75 minute mark will start. Once you get it to that 11 pounds of pressure, you have to keep it at that 11 pounds for 75 minutes. You can't just keep letting it drop back down below 11. It has to stay at 11 because if your pressure goes back down, then you got to start your time over again. So steam is coming out of our spout right here. So since this has been going for 10 minutes, we're going to go ahead and put our weight on here. Once you put the weight on here is really when your pot starts coming up to pressure. And so when you put this on there, you want to start watching it to start to get it to the right pressure. 
Now, if you've never used a pressure canner before, it's going to start making some noises. This right here, you can see where water is kind of spitting out of it just a little bit. This is going to pop up when, when pressure starts building in this. This is going to pop up. That is normal. That's what it's supposed to do. Your dial is not really going to start changing until this pops up back here. And it will take a minute or two and start jiggling just a little bit and it'll come up and then go back down, but it eventually will pop up and stay. So you're starting to, this is starting to move around. It's getting ready to pop up here. That means that pressure's almost all the way built up in your pot. Okay, so this has popped up now. That means pressure's built up in our pot and now the gauge is gonna start increasing. All right, so we are at 11 pounds of pressure right now, so we're just gonna just kind of keep keep an eye on this. Since these are pint jars, we're gonna have to keep these in here at 11 pounds of pressure for 75 minutes. Once it reaches that 75 minute mark, then we're just gonna turn it off and just let it cool down on its own. All right, so this has been going for 75 minutes. Now this is done. I just turned the, the temperature off here. I'm just gonna sit here and let this pot cool down to temperature. I'm gonna do something here that you're not supposed to do. So a lot of people, when their canner gets done, they turn the temperature off and they look at the gauge and they want to go ahead and they want to get the next batch going. So this is what they do. They take their weighted gauge off and pull it off and steam starts coming out of it. So when you do that, it's going to drop your pressure really fast. But it is a big fat no-no. Don't do it. And here's why. One, when you drop the pressure that fast, you take a really good chance on cracking your jars. And so as this pressure goes down, that is still part of the canning process and you don't wanna shortcut that temperature. So you just wanna sit here and let this cool down until the, the pressure gauge is on zero. It's gonna take you know anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes. This canner is all cooled off, it's ready to go. Pressure is down, the dial is back to zero and when, when you take the weight off, there's no steam or anything coming out. So we can go ahead and open this up. So I'm just gonna take these jars out and just set them on a cutting board and just leave them till tomorrow and let them cool. And so once these cool, I will just make sure these lids are sealed on here good. If you have a lid that's not sealed, you just wanna go ahead and put that in the refrigerator and use it up within the next week because if a lid isn't sealed, it won't stay on the shelf, it will go bad. So you always wanna make sure that your lids are sealed once your jars cool completely. So this process does take a while. I'm not gonna lie about that. I mean, you're looking at really a good two full days of cooking before you even get to the canning process. I think we we put this meat on the smoker for probably 18 hours on, I mean, a very low smoke for 18 hours. And then, you know, the next day it got put into the oven in a big cast iron pot with just a little bit of water. And then it stayed in there for eight to 10 hours on really, really low, like 170, just to cook that meat off of the bone. So you're looking at a good two days before you can even start the canning process. So why in the world would you want to do it? Why not just chop the raw pork up, stick it in a jar, do all your canning, and you can be done in half of a day? Trust me, you are going to thank me for telling you how to do this. As a Southern girl, I love some good pulled pork, and I don't think there's any better way to do it than to smoke it slow and for a long time. It is probably my favorite way to eat any type of pork. But when you can open this jar later on and it tastes just like that's pulled pork that you took off the grill and you can just dump this out and make a sandwich or whatever else you wanna make with it, there's just no better thing. And so my absolute favorite way to can pork is this method that I just showed you. Trust me, it does take a long time, but you will thank me for it. Give it a try and let me know what you think about it.